All right, clip number two, section four on inscribed angles and polygons. In this clip, we're simply going to do one example illustrating inscribed angle theorem. And I'll talk about a corollary to that theorem and how it relates pretty specifically to this example. And it has some nice connotations that will make things convenient for us moving forward. All right, so in this example, we're given the following diagram, a, a circle with what appears to be an hourglass or black widow type of shape in the inside of it. Um, again, just like from like a practice of being able to interpret a diagram and know what I'm seeing, uh, just to kind of count the number of inscribed angles given in this diagram, there are actually four in this case. Each At each of the letters, there is an angle created. Uh, and so just kind of walking through them, Angle T up here at the top is created by STR. So being able to explain these, inscribed angle T has intercepted arc SR down here, or RS, however you think about it. Angle U down here in this corner actually has the same intercepted arc, RS again. Okay. Angle R has intercepted arc TU on the right hand side, angle R created by this angle. And then angle S again has the same intercepted arc of TU created by that angle. So there are actually four in inscribed angles uh, shown here in this diagram and four intercepted arcs respectively. And this, the corollary we're gonna talk about after working through this example relates to the fact of what happens if I have two inscribed angles that have the same or share the same intercepted arc? And we're going to talk about that in a minute. So we're given the following diagram. And in this mess of a diagram, there's actually only one measurement shown here. 31 degrees. It's inside this wedge of angle U. So 31 degrees refers to the measurement of angle U. The other thing I want to point out here is you'll notice that the center of the circle is separated from each of these chords that is created. So there is no di there is no um, diameter shown in this this diagram. Okay, nothing conveniently goes through the center, and that the only reason that diameter is helpful is because then I can immediately understand arc relationship, like 180 degrees, uh, that can be useful for other things. But that's not given here. So really, the only measurement that I can understand here is that angle U is 31 degrees. I'm going to use this to solve the following. I need to find the measurement of arc RS. That's this guy right here. And the measurement of angle STR, which is really just can be shorthand for angle T. So I'm looking for the measurement of arc RS, which will be in degrees, and the measurement of angle T, which will also be in degrees. And then the last question just asks me is more just uh, an abstract one. What do you notice about angle T and angle U? We're going to find out that there's a relationship between these two. Maybe some of you can see it already. All right, so let me jump to the whiteboard to blow this up a little bit, and we'll work through the solution really quickly on there. Okay, so we're shown the following. Just to kind of blow this up a bit. There's my imperfect circle. All right, and we have this kind of hourglass shape drawn in here. Okay, uh, giving it the names, S, I know this is not perfect from what uh, we see in the drawing, but we'll get the idea. And we're, we're simply told that angle U here is 31 degrees. All right, <clears throat> so the first thing they ask me for is the measurement of arc RS over here on the left-hand side. So the first thing that you should probably notice here, especially within the section about inscribed angles, is that angle U here is an inscribed angle and it makes the following angle. Just to kind of highlight it a bit. And so that, that inscribed angle does have an intercepted arc and that intercepted arc is arc R to S right up here. And so just to kind of show geometrically how I would show work here, just based on that theorem we had before, I would have to say that the inscribed angle is one half of its intercepted arc. So how would I write that? Uh, measurement of angle U is one half of its intercepted arc, which in this case is arc RS. 
which happens to be the piece I'm trying to solve for right here. So in this case, it's a very simple, actually, even though it looks pretty heavy with the geometric language, it's actually a very simple calculation. Angle U is the piece I know here, 31 degrees. And that's going to be one half of the intercepted arc. So if I want to solve for this intercepted arc, I want to divide both sides by one half. Or another way to think about it would be to multiply both sides by two. And so it's, that's really the only calculation here. Multiply 31 degrees by two. Measurement of arc RS is 62 degrees. Done. So again, the computation isn't terribly difficult here. And so to write it in a different color here, uh, arc RS to, to show how it would be written on a diagram outside of the circle, outside of that arc, arc RS is 62 degrees. Great. The second part of this question asks me to find the measurement of angle STR. Also shorthand could just be angle T. And before I couldn't use intercepted arc because I didn't know the measurement of the arc. But now that I do, I can use that for the fact that angle T, this angle right here, actually has the same exact endpoints for its angle, S and R, meaning that S arc S R arc SR, arc RS or SR, it doesn't really matter, but arc RS, what I just solved for, is the same intercepted arc for this angle. And just to show geometrically how I'd write that, again, in this case, I'd say measurement of angle T is now one half of its intercepted arc. It just happens to be the same intercepted arc. And so this is really just solved from the reverse perspective. I don't know this guy now, but I do know this one. So just to write out, RS was now 62 degrees. And measurement of angle T is simply one half of that. So I could either multiply by one half, 0.5, or divide by two. It's the same thing either way. And I find out that measurement of angle T is 31 degrees. Measurement of angle T, S, angle STR, it's the same thing. 31 degrees. And so the abstract part of this question, it says, what do you notice about angle T and angle U? They're the same exact thing. They're congruent to use the geometric term. Well, it actually makes sense as to why. Because they share the same intercepted arc. It's not like this number is magically changing. So if it's staying the same, both these angles should be exactly one half of it. They happen to have the same intercepted arc. So they're going to have the same value. And here's just a little extension of that. If I were to, as long as I had the endpoints at S and R for whatever angle I was drawing, I could actually have a vertex anywhere on this circle, at least on this greater arc, this major arc of the circle, anywhere over here. For instance, if I were to throw an intersection point here, and you don't need to draw this part, but if I were to throw an intersection point right here, the vertex of an angle, and connect it to the same endpoints, Guess what that angle would measure? 31 degrees again, because it would be the same 62 degree arc. So I could simply just rotate somewhere along this greater arc, some vertex point, and as long as it had the same angle endpoints, it would always me measure 31 degrees. And that leads us to the corollary to that inscribed angle theorem. Let me erase this. Just to kind of put it formally in words, what we just illustrated down here at the bottom of the notes. What is given the name, the inscribed angles of a circle theorem. If two inscribed angles of a circle intercept the same arc, kind of like in the diagram we just dealt with, angle T and angle U had the same intercepted arc, RS. If two inscribed angles of a circle intercept the same arc, then the angles have to be congruent to each other because they have to be exactly half of that same inscribed arc. And you'd notice the same thing that angle S and angle R, whatever these end up being, they have to be congruent to each other because they also have the same intercepted arc, arc TU up there. So that will pop up on occasion. So even though I was given very limited information here, it actually gave me quite a bit of things I could solve for. Okay, I'll go ahead and stop the clip there. That will conclude our stuff on inscribed angles. In the next clip, we're going to talk about polygons or shapes, many-sided figures, in the last clip for section four.